What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I'm bringing to you a meta analysis for the May 2019 format. We have so much to discuss in this analysis because this was the first weekend that Dark Neo Storm was legal. Not to mention we have the national season in full effect with plenty of different tournaments taking place all across the world that I just wanna go ahead and dive right in because we have so much to talk about. So first thing I wanna kick things off is with the Dutch National. Now the Dutch National had, I think in the area of like 250 to 300 players and I feel that the top 16 of this event is kind of like the most represented or at least the most well represented of how we can kind of expect the format to go now obviously this is neglecting things like danger thunder dragon and a couple of other decks but I mean for the most part this is kind of what the meta is leaning in towards so first and foremost we have you know the biggest offenders here being salamangrate taking up a big majority of the pie chart here we have orcist which no surprise that orcist is in the top cut. I mean, definitely a big uptick from the prior versions of Orcus that really were just using the Orcus as a tiny sub edge. But now, even though they've kind of upped the harp horror count and now they're going into stuff like Dengirsu way more often. So the Orcus is kind of taking a more central role here. They are definitely taking over because of the fact that this deck is able to put out boards of multiple negations and it can very easily just break boards going second just because it has so many different extenders. Very similar to Danger Thunder Dragon, but it doesn't make a completely unbreakable board, but it kind of trades off some of that offense for being able to play very well going second. And I think that's kind of where that trade off is. Not to mention, you can also play hand traps in Orcus, which I think is kind of neat because while it's a combo deck, a lot of the combos are only like one or two card starters. So basically, as long as you get your combo and maybe another extender, you could have possible hand traps if you wanted additional forms of disruption. And it doesn't really hurt the strategy too much. So when you're looking at your combo deck you know basic possibilities it's interesting because you can kind of choose to go to danger thunder route but danger orcus seems to be what everyone is favoring and i think a lot of us anticipated that solely due to the fact that the deck is absolutely crazy so we have that i'll go ahead and put up a list from i believe a fourth place uh top eight from the dutch national to give you an idea of what the builds are looking like but we'll cover a few more of those builds later on in the video there's also the second place uh, uh salamangrate deck from this event as well. Salamangre is going to be all over these tournament results, as you can imagine, since basically Lady Debug going to one did absolutely nothing. But the deck that managed to win was Sky Striker. Yes, Sky Striker, even with Kagari going to one, Sky Striker still managed to take the event. Joshua Oosters was the man who did it. I could not find his list at the moment, but I'm sure it'll be out there at some point. But congratulations to him. Sky Striker is still going strong. Now, another big contender on this top 16 is is Mystic Mind Burn. Yes, our biggest fears have come true, and Mystic Mind Burn was not only topping at the Dutch National, but when we get later on to this meta analysis, it actually managed to take first place at some other events as well, which is utterly horrifying, but basically you guys need to now know that you need to be playing spell and trap removal that is not in the form of a monster effect, because this deck is real. Like, this deck is starting to get to the point where it's not rogue, where it's actually going to be meta, and yeah, it might be like, you know, tier 1.5, tier 2, but it has definitely established itself and people are going to start picking up on it the more popularity it starts to get because they're going to think, oh, this deck's actually pretty good. And frankly, it is because when you look at the other top meta decks, Sky Striker, Salamangrate, Orcus, they actually have a pretty rough time dealing with this. I'd say Sky Striker probably has the best matchup. I mean, Sky Striker's actually playing Mystic Mind. That shows you how well it can play under it. And again, we'll get to that a little bit later on. On. But for the rest of the pie chart, we also have True Draco. Now, True Draco is in here because not only does it have decent matchups against the top decks, we've seen this in the prior months leading up to this point, but it also has the best matchup against Mystic Mind, which is the funniest part about it, because it has built in archetype spell and trap removal in the form of the True Draco spell and trap cards, meaning it can just, that, that match is just like a buy if you're playing Draco. That is Mystic Mind's worst matchup. So if you fear that deck the most, just play True Draco because that will be the best way you can tackle that matchup. And again, True Draco is not that bad against the top decks. It has a pretty decent Sky Striker matchup. It's like okay against Salamangrate. I think the bigger combo decks are going to give it a little bit more trouble just depending on how the meta and kind of how the meta shapes up, especially if those decks start main decking stuff like Twin Twister, Red Reboot, what have you, because then those tools that are typically relegated to the side deck giving True Draco a better game one are going to just not be as favorable due to that. 
stats. So it is something you do have to keep in mind. And then we did also have an Endymion make the top 16, not a Pendulum Magician. This was actually a pure Endymion list. This might be the first pure Endymion list to actually see relatively good success. I know we've seen it like in the regional scene, but the nationals are a little bit higher in my eyes. So pretty cool that we saw that. I'll definitely have the list up there for you guys to see, just so you can see what that player was running. One more thing I did want to cover from the Dutch National was a 17th place sub-terror list, but also managed to take second place at the Mega Regional the following day. This is something that the European events do on their two-day events, and like, again, kind of like with Dusseldorf, instead of having that Mega Regional, they just made a second YCS entirely. Typically, it's just like another large event that you can participate in, and you pretty much just have to do extremely well. So the fact that this deck basically almost topped both events just goes to show that sub-terror and guru control are not out of this form. Now moving on, we have the Spay National and Salamangrate end up taking first place at that event. Congratulations to him. And again, even though Salamangrate won, there was still Sky Striker in attendance. There was still Orcus in attendance. There was still Mystic Mind Burn in attendance. These are the decks that we're starting to see more and more of. And basically the trend is the more of the deck you're going to see, that's what the meta is going to comprise of. So we're starting to slowly solidify and define our format moving into the WCQ season. So that's really all I have to cover on the Spain National, but now we also have the Norwegian National as well, and we only have the top four from this, and it was two Salamangrates, I believe it was a true Draco, as well as a Dinosaur. Now, the Dinosaur is interesting because, um, you know, Miscellaneous Source is back at three from the old ban list, so this is something that could give Dinosaurs a boost in that Rogue status and give it a chance, so just keep in mind that Dinosaurs are starting to peek their heads out a little bit more, and you have to be prepared for that matchup as well, but again, Salamangrates still Still doing its thing. It won the Spain National, it won the Norwegian National, and you can see that first place list right here for yourself. Now, I want to go ahead and move on to the ARG that took place in Springfield. Now, this was a very, very small event. I'll have the pie chart up for you guys here so you can see the breakdown and overall representation. But I think this event only had like 76 players. So this was like smaller than most regionals, honestly. So definitely take these results with a grain of salt. We do see that, you know, when you're looking at the top decks, I mean, it's what? Salamangrate, it's Orcus, and I believe True Draco were at the top. But then you also have uh, Thunder Dragon, which was up there, which is Thunder Dragon for showing, at least by my meta analysis uh, this far. And then we also have, you know, a couple of other one-off decks. I mean, we have an ABC in there. There's like a Trick Star. There's all these other random one-offs. But again, because the player count for this event was so low, I definitely take this with a grain of salt just due to the fact that the round count is so low. Not to take any credit away from the players who ended up winning the event because, funny enough, Sky Striker ended up winning the ARG as well. So that's another instance where Sky Striker was able to take it. I'll have that list for you guys here so you can see was playing the mystic mind so do keep that in mind and also go ahead and throw up the second place orcus list just so you guys can take another glance at a different take on orcus even though you can kind of see a lot of similarities between this list and the list from the dutch national but this is kind of how these decks are starting to trend as we move forward into this format now next up i want to talk about the san jose regional because at the san jose regional in california it was over 400 players and the deck that took first place you guessed it, Mystic Mine Burn. This is one of Mystic Mine's first wins of the format, and it was the week after Dark Neo Storm has been released. So this just goes to show that this deck can win events, and this was not like a tiny regional. 400 players means that they had to play nine rounds, and yeah, that's just absolutely absurd. So congrats to him. You see stuff in his deck, like playing the Letter of Ledgerman or whatever that card is that lets you banish three, and then three turns later, just add those cards to your hand. In a stall deck, what did I say way back in the day when that card was first announced? If there's any way a game can be prolonged be that many turns, Leather of Letcherman is like absolutely broken. So that's just crazy that it's just getting even more draw power into the deck. It's not immediate draw power, but with a card like Mystic Mine, you really don't need it, especially if no one is main decking spell and trap removal in the form of spell or trap cards. We also had a top 32 list, which was the World FTK piloted by my boy Slim. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is because the World FTK is something we saw at YCS Chicago, and it really hasn't gone anywhere. This is one of the last few remaining 
remaining FDKs in the format. And basically the whole purpose of this deck is to turbo through playing all your dangers. You have three copies of Saryuja and ultimately you're gonna end on a copy of the world, skip your opponent's turn. And then on the next turn, just summon all your monsters and attack your opponent for game before they have any opportunity to even have a turn. So this is just something to keep your eye on. Like I said, it almost topped YCS Chicago and now it actually made a top 32 at this event. So just something to keep your eye on. I don't think you're gonna see this too much, but it is something that if you're not prepared for, it could definitely catch you off guard. I wanna talk about now the Guatemalan National because guess what took first place there? Mystic Mine Burn, that's correct. And even though you had Salamangrate and Sky Striker and Orcus all in the top eight cut of this National, Mystic Mine Burn ended up taking it. So again, not only did it win one tournament this past weekend, it won multiple. And these are like big events too. These aren't like locals or anything. So Mystic Mind Burn has definitely put itself on the map. Now I want to go ahead and move on to the Honduras National, and this was actually taken by Orcus. So I'll go ahead and have another Orcus list for you guys to see. Again, just so you can kind of compare and contrast all the different Orcus lists that I've shown you thus far, just so you can see what kind of trends there are and any spicy tech cards that these decks might be running. And then lastly, I want to go ahead and talk about two more uh, tournaments, one of which is the Mexican National. I did not find the winner, but there was a second place Salamangrate list for you guys to check out here. And then lastly, was a regional in Missouri, as a matter of fact, I believe it was in St. Louis, where Danger Spiral ended up taking first place. Danger Spiral is a deck that's kind of like been lurking around the rogue category, of course, but it's something that, again, Spiral is still incredibly, incredibly strong. Tough and Agent, especially in a slower format, can be absolutely ridiculous. And not to mention, Double Helix and Sleeper are incredibly powerful cards. So again, not something you should worry about too much, but it is something that people you know are starting to tinker around with and if one person tops with it some other people might want to experiment with it and it might see a small uptick in popularity so again just be mindful that there are people experimenting with this deck i just thought it was really cool to see a spiral deck take first place at a regional in 2019 so guys that's gonna do it for the meta analysis let me know down in the comments what you guys think about how the format is shaping up and how much you guys really hate mystic mind burn and the fact that it is winning i'd really love to hear your thoughts. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And if you found this video helpful, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member. Because just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.